In the last video, we did financial statement question number four, and we completed the statement of earnings. In this video, we're going to do the statement of changes in equity. Remember that there are amounts that have to turn up on the statement of changes in equity. Let's note them. Contributed capital at March 31st is the ending balance under contributed capital on the statement of changes in equity. Dividends show up on the statement also. Issuance of shares in March would show up on the statement of changes in equity. And finally, retained earnings at March 1st. In addition, we need a number from the statement of earnings, which would be the net earnings of 76,804. We now have all the information to create the statement of changes in equity. Note that we're also supposed to explain the purpose of the statement, and we'll do that after we create it. As always, we start with the company name, name of the statement, the period of time covered. The statement of changes in equity is in column format. Each item that shows up on the equity section of the statement of financial position has a column, contributed capital, retained earnings, and then I have a total column. I start, of course, with the beginning balance. I wasn't given a beginning balance for contributed capital, but I was given one for retained earnings. The beginning balance for contributed capital, therefore, is an unknown number which has to be calculated. Next, I issued shares. When I issue shares, as you know from the flowchart that we covered in a previous video, issued shares are part of contributed capital, $10,000. Issued shares never impact retained earnings. 10,000 plus zero is equal to 10,000. Next, a distribution of dividends. The distribution of dividends, as you can note from the flowchart, only affects retained earnings. Negative 6,000. Add them together. Negative 6,000. Finally, net earnings. Net earnings never impacts contributed capital. Instead, it goes under retained earnings because it's one of the items that is used to calculate ending retained earnings. 76,804. Add them together. No other changes. We have the ending balance. The ending balance in contributed capital was given to us on the listing, 57,500. We can therefore now work backwards to discover the beginning balance, 47,500. We can use that information, add it to beginning retained earnings, to find out the total amount at the beginning of the period. We can now add up the column for retained earnings to come up with the ending retained earnings balance. Add these amounts together, either going along the bottom or down the side, to come up with the final total equity. And that's the statement of changes in equity. What is the purpose of the statement of changes in equity? Often students find the statement of changes in equity a waste of time. After all, we already have the statement of financial position and the statement of earnings. But because owners have invested in the business to maximize their wealth, they are interested in knowing how the business's financial position and performance have affected their investment over time. This is only shown on the statement of changes in equity. It tells the stakeholders about the investor's wealth through details about contributed capital how it has changed over time. It also tells them about the effect of earnings on the investor's wealth position and any distribution of that wealth back to the investors in the form of dividends. Those details are only available from the statement of changes in equity. In the next video, we're going to complete the statements with the statement of financial position.